Thank you for tuning in to Ashley University. This video is going to go over the general overview of our DSP programming for our PIMA 8250. Keeping in mind that this programming is the same across all the PIMA units, whether you have an 8-channel or a 4-channel version. So let's look at the left-hand side here. The left-hand side is the input side of the PIMA. You have 8 inputs, and the right-hand side is the output, so you have 8 outputs. So you can label any of these inputs with labels that correspond to your configuration, whether it's microphones, iPods, CD players, or just standard inputs. On the output side, you can label any one of your outputs, whether you're doing just particular zones or a house right, house left situation. You can also label it as a subwoofer. So let's take a look at the DSP population blocks. There are six blocks here on each of these inputs and outputs that you can load your DSP. Here's how you would go about programming the DSP. You'll notice that when you mouse over any of these blocks, it'll say to right click here to select DSP. So I'm going to right click here and I'm just going to walk through the various menu tabs that we have here. So the, in the dynamics you see all the different DSP functions that you have, whether it's a brick law limiter all the way down to a gate. In the gain function you have gain, gain with VCA, or even our remote gain. So let's just start here with dynamics. Let's go ahead on this microphone input. Let's go ahead and put an auto leveler in there. And then we're also going to come over here and we're going to look at the various other dynamics that we have. You can add a compressor in here, a ducker, or a gate. But now let's come down to an equalization. There are various blocks of DSP that you can drop into this input channel, whether you're looking for a graphic 31 band EQ, or I can come in here and I can even use parametric EQs. Also with the features that we have here, you also see in the equalization block that we have a feedback suppressor. A feedback suppressor is a great feature to add to any microphone channel that you are programming into the DSP. We'll get into the various programming of each of these functions in later videos. But right now we're going to concentrate specifically on the dynamics and the other DSP features in just the general overview. So now as we look at the output side of this, again you would just mouse over the various DSP block that you want to populate and drop in the dynamics, the gain, the equalization, or if you're putting in crossover or delays. So here we're just going to come over and put in a parametric six band EQ. You will continue this process until you have the entire matrix set up the way that you want for your project. Once you have this completed, now we're going to go over here and we're going to look at how to assign your inputs to your outputs. Again, keeping in mind the input channels are on the left and the output channels are on the right. Now we want to take a look at the actual matrix part of this processor. This is where I'm going to assign my inputs to my outputs. So the easiest way to go about doing this is just to click on the input channel, this block on the input channel, and click and drag to the output channel that you want. And you'll notice that I'm going to assign this microphone to each one of the zones with the exception of the subwoofer. So I am not going to click and drag a route down here, but I am going to click and drag this all the way down to the dining room. Now when it comes to the iPod, I want the iPod to go to each one of these zones as well, including the subwoofer because that's going to have music playback on it, and I want to be able to have that low frequency sound assigned to the subwoofer. So that's how you would assign your inputs to your outputs, and again, you would do this with every input channel assigning it to every output channel. We're going to get into more details on shortcuts and other features of the DSP in more detail in later videos, so please feel free to tune in to other videos located on our website. So that gives you a good general overview of how to program the DSP tab in this. You will continue this process for all of the DSP functions that you want to populate throughout your entire project. Thank you for your continued support of Ashley.